Hi everybody, it's Joni Young here. I'm back with another quick little video on how to use a liner brush. And I'm gonna show you all the ways you can use it in your paintings and make it so much easier for you to paint with these. So I'm gonna show you some great tips and tricks today. Don't forget to hit subscribe now and let's get right into this video. So I'm just gonna show you, I've got my little cup of water here and the very first thing you need to know about liner brushes is that they need a lot of water. So most people have a hard time, I'll show you on this side what you're doing wrong and the wrong way to approach using a liner brush. And here on the left side is gonna be the right way to use it and apply brush strokes. So the, the biggest mistake I see my students make is going in and just scooping up a bunch of paint. Um, so you're not gonna be able to create those delicate little details and wispy strokes with a liner brush if you have too much paint on your brush. And if you don't have enough water, you're definitely not gonna be able to do anything and you're gonna be left struggling. So let's start off with the correct way to use the liner brush. First things first, water. You wanna get a bunch of water on there and I'm gonna show you with black how you're gonna load it. So I just wanna use the tip of the brush and I'm gonna show you how to paint branches first. So I'll just pull in very lightly, very little pressure. We'll just add a little wiggly line here and see how seamless that was. It just glides. And then if you have enough water in there and paint, you can create a few little wispy branches, delicate looking ones, and then it starts. And then what, what's happening here, we're running out of paint and water and this is how easy it should be but if you're doing it all wrong you're scooping up way too much paint like this and you're trying to go like that and wondering why you can't control the brush why it's coming out globby and too thick like that or you don't have enough water and you know you're trying to and this is fine if you want to paint a thicker tree but we've got other brushes for thicker areas. If you wanted to try doing that with this brush, you could, as I just demonstrated there, but we're not trying to do that. We're wanting to use this liner brush for very delicate, thin, graceful looking lines and branches, maybe long uh, blades of grass or a fence, etc. So I'm gonna show you not having enough water on your brush. People tend to just wanna push harder if they can't or scoop up more paint when they're struggling. So that is the wrong way to do it. I'm gonna go right into some water and I still have so much paint in my brush that I don't even need to reapply. I can just go ahead very lightly. And I like to make really crooked old looking branches. So I'll always tell you guys Look at my fingers and what I'm doing as I'm pulling my brush around. I'm moving around with it while twisting and rolling it. So I wanna make sure I have enough. So it's a lot of going back and forth, picking up more water and getting your brush ready. So you wanna pull, twist, wiggle like that. Refold the brush right away. And then just add, see I'm just using the tip of the brush, little branches. Starting to run out of some paint and water in there, but I can still make a few little ones, but I don't wanna push when I get to that point because see how much paint is still in there? And that's why people often, when they start to run out, they go back and add more paint. What you need, because we still have lots of paint in there, is you just need a little bit of water. Okay, so that's how you would use a liner brush. Now, here's another tip for you. If you're holding the brush, the ferrule, if your fingers are really close down to the brush itself, the bristles, it's gonna be harder to control. I find if you hold maybe midway down the handle, even farther up, you're gonna apply less pressure 
and have even nicer, softer looking, thinner, wispy brush strokes and lines. Okay, so I hope you guys picked up some great tips just from this right now. Now I'm gonna show you how you can make grass. So the same amount of water, a little bit of paint, and we'll just pull some grass up here along the bottom. So I'm just gonna pull and flick. Take the time and patience, have the patience to load your brush. Pull, wisp. You can paint your grass straight up and down if you want. But if you wanna create movement and make it feel like there's a bit of a breeze in your scene, Maybe you're working on a seascape and you've got those long pieces of grass overlooking the, the water. Create that little sea breeze by just adding a little arc one way or another to the left or to the right. Now see how little paint I've been using on this side and I have a better outcome. I'm able to execute the brush stroke way better and easier than pushing too hard and adding too much paint to my brush. So this is the wrong side or wrong way. I'm just going to put an X here and I'll put a check mark here. Now I'm going to show you how to paint some fence posts, all just using the liner brush. So we can add a little fence down here. I'm going to just add a little crooked, a few fence posts. And here I'm actually going to push a little bit, not even really pushing. I'm just applying a little bit more pressure. See how my brush is? I'll show you up here. It's kind of curved like this. Okay. That's the angle and the amount of pressure you want to add. Okay, and then say for perspective's sake, we want this one to be closer to us. So we're going to add a little width and a little height. Making it thicker and taller. And these ones are going to get thinner, shorter and thinner and thinner. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do is add, I like using this to add like the, the thin kind of um, barbed wire that you see around farms. So I'm just going to go and sweep, crooked, twisting and rolling. I'll add another one, twist and roll and just kind of have it almost like a branch. And then you can just take a little bit, very little pressure just to create those little sharp pieces. You don't want to get caught in those. Now, because this video is really quick, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can add a highlight if you wanted to. See as how I've got some white on this side using the liner brush. So you're just going to clean the brush off, twist and roll, in the white and I would just come from let's say the light source is in the center here and it's hitting the right side of the tree I would just kind of twist and roll and go over one side adding water and a little bit of paint And you can just add some more branches. This is how I would approach it. Sometimes I just make up, I'll add extra branches that aren't even existing yet. And instantly we get some light. So this is the right way. I tend to use a little bit more paint on the tip of my brush for adding highlights, especially if it's gonna be like some snow, um, because then it looks textured. So it's gonna look a little thicker and more textured, but it's so fun 
and effective using the liner brush for trees, grass, little fence posts like this. I'm going to show you the wrong way of most of you guys are going like this, loading your brush all wrong, overloading it, and then pushing too hard and adding too much paint, too much pressure, and then see what happens. You end up left with, it looks like a cactus. <laughs> I see this all the time. And I started the same way, so there's no shame in that. We all fail before we succeed. So no matter what you're doing, you have to accept the fact um, that you're going to make big mistakes, but you have to get over that hump in the beginning in order to get to the level that you feel comfortable with and you're at one with a brush. And I love to help you guys get there with these tutorials. I love teaching more than anything. So this is the wrong way. This is the right way. Less paint, less pressure, a little bit more water, holding your brush higher up uh, towards the end of the handle. Now let's come in here and add some highlights to this little fence. So I'm going to use a little bit more, a little bit more paint on the tip of my brush. If you water it down too much, it probably won't show up when it dries. Unless you're painting on like a black canvas, then it'll probably show up a little bit better. So I'm going to just go on the same side here. This one I'm going to add a little bit of a thicker line, right? Because I want it to stand out more. It's the biggest one closest to us. And I will be doing, let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see um, a quick tutorial, straightforward, a few easy steps on perspective, how to create perspective, because a lot of people I know have a hard time with that. And I can make it really easy for you guys by showing you a few things that I teach my students and have taught over the past 20 years. So now I'm going to just add a really thin, thin water down highlight to the little barbed wire here. I'll start back here. And just slightly finish off a little dab on those sharp areas. And you want to make sure you're very careful with your liner brushes, how you use them, don't be rough with them. Don't scumble with them. Um, they're not great for blending. Otherwise, you're going to ruin the brushes because they're really delicate. There's very little hairs in there, so you want to take care of them. This one, if you're curious about this one, it's from my set of five brushes that I designed. Craft Mill produced them, and they're shipping them worldwide right now. So I don't know how many we've got left, uh, depending on when you're watching this, but I'll have a link below. It's www.craftamo.com. They're cruelty-free brushes, and they're amazing brushes. So I want to thank you guys for watching this. I hope that I helped you and I hope that you learned to love the liner brush. Be sure to leave a comment or question below if you have one. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. I've got close to a thousand videos here, much more on Patreon as well. And you can share your versions of what you've learned with me on our Facebook group. So come and join us. There's over 27,000 from all over the world there showing and sharing their work from um, my YouTube channel. I'll see you guys soon in another video. Wishing you all the best. Bye.